Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Okay, before I translate this, let me show you how this sounds in Spanish. Got it? You get the point. That's the quality of people Joe Biden has led into the country. Just so you understand. Hello everyone, before we get going, I want to touch base on a couple of updates. Let's start with Speaker Mike Johnson, and I will read part of this report due to copyright reasons. House Speaker Mike Johnson plans to bring separate bills funding Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan to the House floor. We will vote on the Israel aid, uh, on the uh, aid to Ukraine, on the aid to the Indo-Pacific. We'll also allow for an amendment process on the floor so that the, uh, the regular processes and orders of the House can play out. Every member ultimately will be able to uh, vote their own conscience on all of these matters and everyone have an opportunity to weigh in and bring the amendments that they uh, think are, are suitable. The move is an effort to work around a large block of Republicans who oppose sending more money to Ukraine. Johnson has faced intense pressure to pass legislation to help rearm Israel following Iran's attack. We've also learned Speaker Johnson spoke with President Biden before laying out this plan. Any indication that Democrats may get on board with this? These are proposals that Democrats have supported, funding for Israel, Ukraine, um, and the th third is funding for Taiwan, and then there's a fourth bill that's got some conservative priorities in it. We don't know exactly what the text of that bill is going to look like, so it's unclear to take the temperature of what Democrats will think about that. But on the whole, this is something Democrats have largely supported. Of course Democrats would support it. Now, as far as Mike Johnson goes, as senile Joe likes to say, two words. He's got to go. Let me start off with two words. Made in America. Made in America. Just two words. Any Republican that wants to lay in bed with senile Joe and the military industrial complex, you gotta tell him what? And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. It's that simple. I told you. I will call them out if they step out of line. In fact, we will all call them out, regardless if they're on the Democratic or Republican side. Guys, this is the national debt clock as of this recording. It's a true disgrace, but it doesn't end there. We have another update from Chicago, so please, Let's watch. Mayor Brandon Johnson will be asking the City Council Budget Committee for $70 million today to help care for asylum seekers. This request comes as sources familiar with the plan say the money is needed as the city approaches the Democratic National Convention in August. Now, most of the money would come from a reserve fund set up for migrants and the rest from rainy day funds. According to the mayor's office, the city has spent nearly $300 million dollars to help feed, shelter, and care for migrants since August of 2022. More than 34,000 migrants have been sent to Chicago in that time frame. Now, although the number of migrants coming to Chicago has slowed considerably lately, the city says we have to be prepared should there be any sudden increases in new arrivals from the border. Now, the committee will meet today at 2 p.m. to consider this latest proposal, but the full council would need to approve the funding totally outrageous i am hoping that the city council in chicago grows a pair and denies such a stupid and ridiculous proposal but wait a minute that report was from yesterday i just got word that he got approved the Finance Committee approved another $70 million to spend on supporting migrants. But there was some reluctance. Some council members say that the city is not spending money on its own residents who are also in need. 
Chicagoans had to give up park district facilities to house the new arrivals in Chicago. The city reports all of the park district field houses have been cleared and returned to the neighborhoods. But money is still needed for migrant care. And with the Democratic National Convention coming up, there could be more migrants dispatched to the city. The city is expecting the state and federal government to help out, but one council member said that the federal government's action so far is to do nothing. The full city council will have to approve this measure. Of course, the federal government is busy giving money to the rest of the world. It is up to the states to take care of the migrants, or as the White House likes to call them, the newcomers. Think about that for a second. We are old news guys. These are the new prospect American citizens. I'm just stating the facts. Mayor Johnson's request for an additional $70 million to help new arrivals from the southern border has passed its first test. This afternoon, in a 20 to 8 vote, the Budget Committee signed off. Debate went on for hours. I have yet to see anything <laughs> from my community. We, we, we're throwing more money out the window on a population of people who are coming here and they're living better than the people who are here. There's no found money. There's no free money. The decisions we make in the next couple of days about these large buckets of monies that exist are going to have a profound impact on our ability to balance our budget in 2026 and subsequently 2027. For months, Mayor Johnson avoided asking city council to approve more funding for migrant services. He decided against making the request, despite reports he promised the state and county Chicago would authorize more. As of this morning, there were 9,173 residents in 18 city and state shelters. Roughly 39,000 migrants have arrived in Chicago since August 2022. The Johnson administration says migrant support cost the city $295 million through the end of last year. Before the city council got underway, Governor Pritzker urged a yes vote. I know there is just generally a feeling like, hey, it's our money, we should you know, apply it to the people who've lived here for a long time. But the reality is that it's much better for the city and for the state um, if we provide just basic, basic humanitarian care for people who arrive here. <laughs> this has to be a simulation. No, seriously, it has to be. They don't even hide the corruption anymore. It is mind boggling. Anyway, guys, before we continue with the video, please smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you can share the video, then I would greatly appreciate it as well. It helps the algorithm so that more people can watch these updates. Now for today's episode, we have more migrants complaining in New York. They are demanding their rights and even got violent towards the police all while living in a hotel that has a pool, by the way. I will show you the pictures. Everything is upside down right now, but luckily for us, this is the channel where we don't play any games. Here we lose all of our doubts and receive an abundance of knowledge. So let's get started. All right, guys, so let's go over the English report first, and then I'll translate the Spanish channels that also reported on this disaster. Multiple arrests at a hotel in Yonkers that serves as a shelter for migrants. Residents say things got heated yesterday when they confronted hotel staff who they say have been mistreating the migrants and taking things from their rooms. Eyewitness News reporter Marcus Solis is in Yonkers this evening. Marcus? Sandra, it was last May when the city of New York signed a contract to house 250 migrants here in Yonkers. In nearly the year since, tensions have been running high between the organization that oversees the shelter, West Hab, and the residents. Oh, no, I'm not better. 
The images are dramatic, the tension at a boiling point. Yonkers police arresting two migrants, one of them a woman who was pushed to the ground during a scuffle with officers. The incident occurred yesterday, but many of the asylum seekers say their frustration has been building for months. Si no tenían seguridad en nuestro país, para no tenerla aquí. We escaped our countries because we weren't safe. Now we're not safe here, says this migrant from Venezuela, who's among the 82 families being housed at the Ramada Inn on Tuckahoe Road. Migrants first arrived at the location last May, welcomed with donations from nonprofit groups and Westchester residents. But in the months since, the asylum seekers say they've been harassed by social service administrators and intimidated by security guards they employ. The chief complaint Wait, wait, is let's go back for one second. Right there, uh, that lady was saying some things in Spanish that were not translated. So let me tell you what she said. She said, they are stealing from us and violating our rights. That's exactly what she said. I mean, the audacity, right? Demanding rights, not in her home country, not in Venezuela, but demanding rights here. She has some guts, let me tell you, but let's continue. The chief complaint is workers entering rooms without warning or with no one present. The occupants have been told the reason is to remove unsafe appliances like hot pots, which are not allowed. My iron, my hair dryer, things for work have disappeared, she says. But others claim money and jewelry have been stolen. They say their complaints are met with calls to the police. By the way, we know a lot of them don't like the food the shelters provide. That's when they bring their hot pots that are a fire hazard, but they don't care. They will still play the victim card because they can under this administration. But let's continue. She says, but others claim money and jewelry have been stolen. They say their complaints are met with calls to the police. <laughs> this clip, the asylum seekers themselves called 911, feeling threatened by a security guard walking through the parking lot holding a knife. Back up. Now, this is what I would ask the security guard if I was the reporter. The migrants feel threatened, but maybe, just maybe, the security guard himself feels threatened. Right? So I would ask all those questions, but they didn't. So let's move on. Back up. I'm Back sorry? up, please. No. Management called police on us today, saying we needed an appointment to visit. Not today. Not today. Whenever you get a chance, just call and I'll, I'll talk to you. But I got your Not ideas. So let me ask you. Anyway, uh, okay. uh, you and that lady right? there again, she repeats her favorite line. These are our rights, she said. I mean, the staff looks overwhelmed and exhausted of dealing with these freeloaders and entitled individuals. But let's go on. Social services at the Ramada are being coordinated by an organization called West Hab. The mayor of Yonkers says he's monitoring the situation. As I've always said, I'm always I'm mad at those who brought the migrants to our community, but certainly would never treat the migrants uh, with any less dignity, dignity than they deserve. Hmm. Democratic Mayor Mike Spano. More like Mike spat on your face, Yonkers. Please vote him out. Just vote him out. He's mad towards the people that brought the migrants here. Doesn't he know that Biden allowed the migrants to come in? This guy is a complete loser brought the migrants to our community, but certainly would never treat the migrants uh, with any less dignity, dignity than they deserve. Yonkers police say there were 120 calls to this location in the last year compared to 90 the year before that, and one officer suffered a minor injury during yesterday's arrest. We reached out to West Hab, the organization that manages the property. They did not return our calls for comment. The nightmare continues. This is another report from Univision in New York. So I'll translate for you. Let's watch. The journalist says that this past Tuesday, officials came to this hotel that is now a migrant shelter. According to workers there, one of the migrants became violent and was throwing food and also was attacking people. 
So agents uh, confronted Kent and uh, they did witness him being aggressive. But it was then when other migrants surrounded the police and they started recording the entire thing. And that's when uh, Kent started saying, I have rights. Is that correct? Here we go with the rights once again. I mean, these people know exactly what to say. They've been trained very well. So yeah, so he says, I have my rights, correct? The journalist continues. After being handcuffed, he started to resist. And he says, you're not going to take me. What am I doing? He says. While cops were trying to place Kent in the vehicle, one female migrant named Yanileth Hernandez started obstructing the cops. Hernandez then did not listen to the cops and continued obstructing. And it was then uh, when police apparently pushed her out of the way so that they can open the door and place Kent inside the vehicle. And that's when more migrants came around the cops. And then more officials came later on. And that's when they tried to arrest Hernandez. And she immediately started resisting and started to punch them. Hernandez was taken to the hospital for minor injuries before being taken into custody. During the confrontation, one of the cops was injured and is now on a medical leave. The journalist adds that this is not the only case involving a migrant this week. In New York City, a man stabbed another man at the Watson Hotel. And on Monday, a guy was punched by five guys at the Randall's Island Shelter. Both Kent and Hernandez are facing charges for disrupting and resisting. And Hernandez is also facing charges for attacking the police. So what do you guys think so far? Inspirational story, right? Please smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much. All right, let's continue now with the last part of this other Spanish report. Here he says, they are unnecessarily taking me to jail. Then the journalist says, this is the moment when uh, the migrant Kent was arrested by police in a hotel in Yonkers that is now a shelter in New York. Authorities said they received a call and they went to the shelter. Apparently Kent was being violent and was attacking staff members. But now he is free and he believes the detention was not fair. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Okay, before I translate this, let me show you how this sounds in Spanish. Got it? You get the point. That's the quality of people Joe Biden has led into the country. Just so you understand, all right? Now, let's move on with the actual translation. The clown says, I was violent at the beginning. Yes, I admit it. I told them. I was complaining. I was demanding the right to receive acceptable food for our kids. Beyond belief. It's absurd. Man. Let's continue. Then here the journalist goes over what Yeni Leth Hernandez did during the arrest where she was obstructing the cops and now we have this lovely photo of Yanileth hitting the police officers and i will put the picture big on the screen so that everybody can see what a wonderful grateful and asylum seeking migrant Yanileth hernandez is and then we see the footage right there where she was taken down and arrested then Kent the Clown says, they folded my arm 
and then they hit me. And that's when I started to resist. Then the journalist adds what the first report told us that the migrants were complaining about feeling threatened by some of the staff and that they were entering the rooms without permission. This migrant says they are entering our rooms without us being there. We're losing money and sometimes personal items and even work items, she says. The journalist states that they reached out to the company that manages the hotel, but thus far they have not heard back. What happened to America? I never thought I would see something like this. And I'm an immigrant. I never imagined it would come to this. Well, guys, as usual, thank you so much for watching the video. And the special thanks go to the amazing people that contribute to this channel. Your support helps me spend more time on these platforms. Don't forget, the shout outs are down below. Likewise, don't forget to follow me everywhere at Vega Access. And the Discord invite link is in the description of this video. And finally, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share the video with at least one person, and let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section below.